quick disclosures, Oppos the Audio Source sent this out for a review. You can find links to this product in the description down below. And Matrix Audio had nothing to do with this review. And as always, no one is asking, paying, or otherwise influencing me to say anything good or bad about this product. All thoughts, like always, are my own. Hey, what's up guys, I'm Josh. So I don't like reviewing DAX. And to be honest, I find DAX pretty boring. That's kind of the reason why. I also think that there's so many good ones at this point that you can pick just about any of the top players at any given price, and you're gonna have a really, really solid product on your hands with very few flaws. Now, as a result of this, I say no to about 99% of the DAC reviews that I get. But this one intrigued me for, honestly, the completely wrong reason. I, for whatever reason, absolutely love the way that this thing looks. I think this is an incredible looking device. So I wanted to take a look at it. So let's talk a little bit about its performance today. Let's talk about its sound quality and let's talk about what type of customer might be into something like this. Functionally speaking, this might be as functional as just about any DAC on the market today. This comes with a full swath of inputs, including your typical analog inputs, but it also comes ready to use with Rune, Tidal, and even Apple AirPlay. Internally, this features an ES9038 Pro chip from ESS, of course, and an inbuilt power supply that is separated with an aluminum wall from the rest of the components to reduce noise. The rest of the physical build is a true specimen. Uh, this thing is very well engineered. Uh, it weighs a total of about 7.5 pounds, so it's very hefty. So when you pick it up, it feels substantial. That weight included with the visuals of this and the material quality and the machining quality that was being used on this device, it just, it feels like a high-end device, which is when you're buying a high-end device, I think something that you definitely want. Yes, the top is tempered glass and yes, it does look amazing. Uh, I actually specifically asked for the white version, however, so that it doesn't show dust. It does come in black also, but personally, I don't think it's nearly as exotic looking as the white version. You're also gonna be in a constant ongoing war with the dust. Now, as far as purchasing a high-end product goes, I enjoy something that is tangibly expensive, like it feels expensive, and that is what this is. It's tangibly expensive. It's also not overly large, but it is very well made. It feels solid. The screen situation on the front could be better. While I do really enjoy the looks of this, it does sacrifice a little bit of functionality being a little bit small relative to the available space on the front. So something like the Matrix Mini i3 has much more usable screen than this does at a fraction of the cost. Even though, I, again, I do think that this looks pretty cool. The build also does feature an internal Wi-Fi antenna to maintain kind of a sleek look. This is something that is surprisingly absent from a lot of devices. Now, I don't know how much I wanna read into this or how important it is, but one of the things that Matrix says on their website is that what enables this is the glass top on top. So that might be why this is able to do it when a lot of other devices can't. Now, as far as listening impressions go, I've been using the new LCD5 and it has been just so good, so, so good. Now I was using this setup with my trusted topping A90. I love that amplifier because it's just a clean slate for everything else to be judged upon. Now this DAC honestly ends up being why I find DACs boring. Let me explain here. This DAC to my ear has flawless performance. There's absolutely no apparent jitter. It does have a diverse range of timbres, awesome dynamic range, which the LC5 absolutely loves and takes full advantage of. Uh, for me, the performance coming out of this though does feel quite standard, which is good, but that probably doesn't make much sense to you. So let me explain kind of what I consider to be standard reference sound in the world of Josh. I've spent a lot of time defining what type of sound I like to hear from my amplifiers and decks. Above all, I value clarity and realness to the sound. I like a deep blackness in between the instruments devoid of any buzzing, hissing, or anything unpleasant. I love far ranging dynamics, great tonal properties, speedy and punchy bass, and a glittery treble response. These are kind of the key tenets of a really good DAC and amp performance that I look for. Any sort of glare, buzzing, obvious audio errors, those things go against it. Now this DAC has no problem meeting my standards and is probably performing at a level that is far beyond my capability or your capability as a listener. Another more simple way of saying this is that in my book, the performance out of this is a total A+. Now, the reason why this ends up being a little bit boring is because at the top end of DACs, when you get into really good DACs, I don't think that there is much, if any, diversification in the sound. 
And that's kind of what is an, a little bit intriguing about a product like this. Up to about 1500 bucks, I, I would consider performance to be probably the key component. But after that, I think everything else I'd be paying for personally, given the, the market of DACs, given the swath of DACs that I've looked at, I think the rest of that budget would just be finding a DAC that had as good a performance as any of the top players, but just looked the best to me or had the best feature set for what I needed. To me, this thing is just an astounding looking DAC. I just love, like, it just looks so nice. I, I don't know why. That stupid little one inch circular screen in the front is just, it's so appealing to me. I can't, can't explain why. However, similar to high-end headphones or amplifiers, uh, this makes a bad value proposition when you uh, calculate the law of diminishing returns for it. But like those, if you have the money for it and you're happy with the spec performance and the reviews confirm a reliable build and promising responses for sound quality, then personally, I'm happy to recommend this. This sounds wonderful. It functions wonderfully. It's built like 3000 bucks. So I think personally, if you were looking at a high end product like this, this to me is something that I'm happy to recommend.